Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another Data Science Fundamentals video for you. Today I'm showing you how to set up your Data Science environment. In Data Science, even if you're using Python or using R, most people use Anaconda, which is a Data Science specific platform. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to download this, how to set it up, and how to configure it so that you can use it going forward. And to, this really just makes your life uh, as simple as possible when you're, when you're learning this field. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more content at the intersection of data science and sports analytics, please consider subscribing to my channel. I actually was having some problems with one of the packages on here, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to just delete it from my computer and start fresh. So this is some of the impetus for this video. The other reason I'm making this is I've used Anaconda and a lot of these packages in some of my other videos, and I wanted to show you how to install it from scratch in case you didn't know how. Okay, so let's get started. We go to anaconda.com. Let's just go to the regular one here. This is all linked in the description below, and you can just go and click this big download button over here. Now, depending on which can, you know system you're using, you can do Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm on Windows, and I'm going to download the Python 3.7 version. If you download Python 3.7, you can still use Python 2.7. You just have to create a, a different instance of Anaconda, and I will show you how to do that in a little bit. So we can download this here. You see it's a pretty big file, and it takes some time to download. Okay, so my instance has finally finished downloading, and I can click and open this up here. So we, for through this page, we click Next. We agree to the license agreement, and I generally do it just uh, for me. Uh, you can do it uh, for all users, but sometimes when you're updating it or doing things like that, you have to log in to the as the admin, which can kind of be a pain. So I recommend just doing it for yourself. Uh, then you store it in users, uh, whatever your computer is, uh, Anaconda 3. You can store it some other places, but I think this is generally a good spot to put it. Now, they generally don't recommend that you put the path environment in. You do this after the fact, and I think that that's probably a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead with those, and now we will have this basically download on our computer here. Okay, so this usually takes five or so minutes. So this process generally takes some time. I kind of cut a little footage to, to speed things up for you here. So we continue and then we eventually finish here. You don't have to learn more about Anaconda Cloud or get started with Anaconda here, but I think that's it's generally fine to do. So if you select those things, it'll bring you to some of these login areas where you can create an account if you want. Um, I won't really worry about that right now, but what we will do is we'll log into the Anaconda Navigator right here, and so we can see basically what we just downloaded. And I'll walk you through each of these packages to kind of uh, talk you through how you can use them as a data scientist and how they could uh, improve the quality of your work to a certain extent. So let's pop this open. Um, so the main tools, if you use Python as, as a data scientist, are going to be Spider. So this is the IDE that I usually use. Uh, you might also use Jupyter Notebooks. And then Jupyter Lab is a expansion on Jupyter Notebooks that gives you some of the features that you might see in Spider. So I think Spider is probably the most similar to a normal IDE where you're writing uh, you know, Python scripts and running them. Jupyter is kind of on the other end where it's completely interactive and you're running just basically blocks of code. And then Jupyter Lab is a little bit of a hybrid. Again, I personally use Spider, but some might consider that a little bit old school. Uh, so if you want to be on the cutting edge, I would, I would make sure you know how to use at least all three of these tools. Um, and again, if you're doing projects, I would generally recommend that you do them and show them to other people through a Jupyter notebook. That's kind of uh, what is done on Kaggle.com. That's what I see in a lot of GitHub repos. Uh, but all three of these tools are generally pretty good. If you're using R, uh, R Studio is pretty much your best option. I would, you know, that's the only thing that I've personally used in R and I've had a good experience with it. It is, in my opinion, almost identical to Spider and Python. 
So if you are using R and you want to try and transition over to learning some Python, that spider ID might be a, a comfortable fit for you. If you're doing actual development, if you're putting something into production, you're, you're, you're coding something up, I personally like VS Code a lot. It works very well for me. And um, it, it's a pretty simple interface as well. So generally when I'm trying to access Anaconda or run, a, or run any of these things, I actually do it through the Anaconda prompt. So you can go Anaconda prompt and that will pop up. This is uh, in, in a Mac, it's the same as the terminal, same as in Linux, but on Windows, you have to open this prompt. So let's say I wanted to open Spider. I would do Spider just like that and it will eventually open up here for me. Same things with Jupyter, Jupyter Lab, uh, the VS Code. Uh, all of these things will be run through here. Now, if you want to install a, a new package, let's say you wanted to install uh, Pandas, for example, what you can do is, well, let's uh, exit here. Let's, so we can do conda install Pandas. And it, it'll load right through here. I, I would assume I already have the, the package installed, but if not, this is a good approach to doing it here. So we can proceed, yes, and this will update uh, pandas here. So I also said earlier in the video that I would show you how to create an instance where you are using a different version of Python. So in order to do this, we do conda create um, name, and we're gonna call this py2, and then we're gonna do Python equals 2.7. So this will install Python 2.7 as an instance. And so we can activate that instance and run that through here. So rather than, you know, Python uh, 3 is great, but it can't run basically every package. So it actually tells us what to do here. So what we can do is conda activate py2 and that gives us this uh, instance of python version 2.7 we'll do the same thing again spider here oops okay so it turns out i actually have to install spider on this environment so we do conda install spider and so it'll collect these packages here we go and we'd have to do the same thing for all of these other packages here this one might take just a little bit. And so if you have these different environments, what you can do is install different things on them. So for example, I have a TensorFlow environment that I use where I have everything installed. Um, if you want to preserve this, you can, you can create an environment um, and always use that, or you can share it as like a Docker image or something like that. So it took a little bit, but I just had to open this again. So we can do activate UI2 that opens this, as you can see, we're using this py2 instance, and then we type spider. I'm still getting some, some kind of weird error messages and stuff like that, but this is working. So as we can see here, let me move this into the frame, we're using Python 2.7.16, and that's exactly what we want. If we exit this, um, and we'll just start a new one, and we just do a spider here, it'll open up with Python 3.7 or whatever I use. So as we can see here, this is Python 3.7.4. So that is how you, again, create one of these new instances. It works with all of these different ones as well. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully it helps you get familiar with the tools that are used in data science, either if you use Python or if you use R. I know that it took me a little while to figure out how to install all this stuff and get used to using it. So hopefully this cuts through some of that noise and allows you to understand what's really important and how to configure these things. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.